Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight for this virtual lecture. Some of you may have joined us previously for uh, the first talk on the postcards of Arnold, um, the postcards of Bucks County, the Arnold Brothers series. Welcome back to another talk about um, about the same topic, but new information coming to you in this hour as well. My name is Olivia Brown. I am the Community Programs Coordinator uh, at the Mercer Museum in Font Hill Castle, and I am delighted to welcome you all to our virtual presentation tonight. Uh, just a few notes of housekeeping. You will notice that your audio and video has automatically been turned off. Um, so you can use the chat or the Q&A function throughout the talk to ask any questions that you might have. Um, I see that Mike has already asked one question showing us how the chat will work, um, asking if he can rejoin via PC when he gets home. Mike, yes, you may. Um, if you need to jump off and jump, jump back on, it will be the same link that you received when you purchased your ticket. Um, so tonight's talk will be about 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll have time for live questions with our speaker at the end as well. So without further ado, um, I would love to turn it over to our wonderful speaker this evening, Chase Palmer, the author of uh, the full and complete Arnold Brothers series book, Postcards of Bucks County, which you can purchase at the Mercer Museum gift shop as well. Um, and tonight, Chase is going to really be talking about the unpublished negatives of the Arnold Brothers and shedding light on some of the photos that no one has seen before because they are glass negatives in the Bucks County Historical Society um, Research Library and Archives Collection. Um, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Chase and I hope that everyone enjoys tonight's talk. Hi everyone, thanks for coming tonight. Um, I'm gonna try to speak loud. Um, I got the second dose of my vaccine yesterday, so I'm a little bit under the weather, but I'm gonna try to speak loud and I hope you all enjoy the presentation. Um, as I'm going through it, if you, want to see anything a little bit bigger, you can minimize your the uh, object that appears in the top right that shows my video and the other video. So if you minimize that, you'll be able to see the PowerPoints a little bit better. So let me get started. So um, thanks everyone for coming tonight. This is the second toss I've done about Postcards of Bucks County, about the book I worked on this year with members from the Washington Crossing Card Collectors Club. For this one, I'm gonna talk mainly about the unpublished negatives and showing more information that um, is available about the series that I didn't talk about in the first presentation, and that's in addition to the book. Um, so the book covers many different things. An image to the right here shows you some of them. This is a page from one of the books for card 406, the trolley bridge in Wycombe. So I have an introduction about the brothers, the businesses and their advertisements, the locations and the addresses and coordinates of all the different sites as well as a postcard scan in colors. It comes up pretty nicely. Images from 1979 to 1980, as well as today of each site, and then a history and any newspaper articles I was able to find about it. So this will help you be able to locate the exact location and see what it looks like today. So if you're not familiar with the Arnold brothers, here's two pictures of them. Newton and Charles Arnold ran a photography and printing business out of Rushland, which is located um, near Wrightstown or Newtown along the Little Neshaminy Creek. On the left is Newton Arnold. He was the photographer of the brothers. And on the right is Charles Arnold. He was the printer. So they printed these postcards from about 1905 until we're not sure exactly when they stopped, but they could have gone all the way up to the 1940s when Charles died. But Newton took all of the pictures between the late 1800s and around 1917. So all of those pictures were taken in this time period. So now I'm going to have some new information from the last presentation. So it's all going to be new from here on out. So in the collection at the Mercer Museum, there are 654 total negative scenes. Of these scenes, 426 are from Bucks County municipalities. I have an image here on the left in yellow are all the municipalities that they went to. So you can see they went to the vast majority of them, but not all of them. Seven scenes are farm scenes that don't fit into a Bucks County municipality. Then there's 24 miscellaneous views, nine transportation views, and then it goes down from there. Um, some notable ones that they did are non-Bucks County locations, such as Philadelphia, New York, or Harrisburg. They did 58 of them. There's 18 images of the Arnold family. There's 45 images of identified people, and then 30 images of unidentified people. So as I go through the presentation today, I'm going to show you 
an example from each municipality and then an example from each of these categories below. So the negatives look like this. There are a total of, as I said, 654 negatives. Of those negatives, 129 are glass and 524 are film. So the film negatives look like this. If there is a print made of them, there's an image to the left that shows what a print looks like. They're also all stored in envelopes that were created in the 1980s when these uh, negatives were donated. Originally, they were in envelopes that were created by Newton, but the envelopes weren't great at this point. So they were recreated in new envelopes with the same information. This information tells you the date, the time of day, the lighting conditions, what camera they used, what f-stop they used, and then a little description of each of the sites. So these envelopes are really helpful to understand what's going on in the picture. And then in 1980 to like 1985, a member of the Washington Cross and Card Collectors Club went out to find the location of a lot of these images if it wasn't easy to tell. And she did her own um, investigative work. So for that, the white image shows the piece of paper that she used and whether she made a print of it and if there was more information that she was able to track down. So this image is of the JG Swish Tower at Neshaminy Falls. Um, it's not a postcard, but it's a pretty cool image. It's a nice way to see some of the other train lines that we don't normally see. So there's also a negative index that the Mercer Museum has. This is used to categorize all the negatives and see like, and be able to search them. So each negative was given a number based on the um, municipality it's in. Then it, there's a location or a subject, a title, a description, a date it was taken, whether it was ever made into a postcard, and then the type of uh, negative it is. Is it film or negative? So this is pretty useful. This was originally type, uh, typed on typewriter by people from the Washington Cross and Card Collectors Club. And then it was redone for um, Excel during the pandemic. So now I'm gonna start going through each municipality. I wanted to make sure that I included images from every municipality because I wasn't sure where people would be on from. So I probably have about one slide for most of them. And then I have two or three slides if it's a very big municipality in terms of the number of images taken. I also write down how many negatives in total are from that municipality and how many of them are from a postcard. So for this one, for Bedminster, they did two total images of Bedminster. They're both shown here because there's only two. One of them was made into the postcard. So for each of them, if it was an image that was made into a postcard, I have them here. So the images on the left are the same image. One is the postcard version. One is the negative version that I digitized. Um, you can see how much clearer the negative version is rather than the postcard image. So it shows you a little bit different types of clarity than what you're used to. And then I show different versions of everything on the right or other images. So as I'm going through each screen, um, I can explain it again, but this is kind of how I'm going to break it down. So this is images of the Deep Run Presbyterian Church. On the left, we have the postcard image. On the right is another image. So it's pretty cool to see the different ways that they photograph these sites. Um, the image on the right focuses more on the graveyard than the one on the left. I'm not sure why they picked the one on the left, but they might have liked that one a little bit more. So here we have Mincion Township. They did a total of 17 negatives of the township, 10 of which are postcard negatives. So they did seven images that were never turned into their series of postcards. So the images on the left, um, the historic Red Lion Inn, as you can see, there's a lot more clarity with the negative. Um, I like this one because you can read a little bit more that's on the sign and you can read the little sign that's located next to the horse. You can actually see that on the digitized one, but you can't see it on their postcard. And then they actually did another image on the right. So what's interesting about the one on the right is you can actually see the trolley tracks in the foreground here. You can see parts of the bridge back there. So I kind of like this one. There's pros and cons of both. Um, I like that this one also has the horse-drawn carriage, but it doesn't have as, as much as the front of the building. So maybe that's why they went with the first one. I'm not sure, but it's still interesting to see two different images of the same location. So here we have Bridgeton Township. They did four negatives in total. Two are postcard negatives. So the ones that became postcards are High Falls, that's here, and Rocky Valley, that's actually my background for, uh, or one of the rock valleys, um, the ringing rock valleys they did. So for these, for High Falls, they took three pictures of them. They're all a little bit different, and I think they show it a little bit differently um, in terms of how the water's falling and the rock formations around it. I think they're each equally as interesting, but it's cool to see how they were able to take three different versions. This would have been hard at the time to take pictures of them because you would have had to get the lighting right with the camera. You would have had to actually go right after it rains, so it actually has a nice rainfall, but I kind of like all of them. Um, the two on the right, I would be very surprised like if someone thought they were taken back then. They look pretty modern to me, even today. So it just strikes me how even the photographs they were taking at the time are pretty timeless till today. Like you wouldn't be able to tell that they took these images so long ago. 
So for Bristol Borough, they did seven negatives total. All of them are postcard negatives. So every picture they took in Bristol, they turned into a postcard. I chose this one because I wanted to show the condition of some of the negatives. So this is card 137 or entrance to the Delaware Division Canal. As you can see, the negative on the right, it's actually broken into multiple pieces. We still have all the pieces, but unfortunately it's been broken. But what's cool about the negative is that you can read all these words on the boat that you weren't able to see before and a lot more clarity, especially with the boat and the structure here on the right or the boats here on the right. Um, a few of the negatives, probably about five or six are broken, which is unfortunate, but all of the pieces are still in the collection. All of the other negatives that are housed here are actually in really great shape. So they all scan really easily. I actually took pictures of this one with my phone. So this wasn't even on the scanner. I took a picture of this with my phone in it. I used an app to convert it to a positive. And so it came up this clear, which is really nice. And then um, I put all the pieces together. So that way, when I took a picture of it, um, the broken pieces aligned. So for Buckingham Township, they took 45 total negatives um, and 22 of them are postcards. So there's 23 images that were never turned into postcards for some other reasons, but um, here are some of the big ones. So the images on the left is card 35 or Buckingham Mountain from Buckingham Station. It's hard to believe that the top image is the same as the bottom one. You can see how much they cropped it. They cropped out the creek rights that's right here. They cropped out a little bit of the building on the right and some of the sky. So they might have really wanted to zoom in on this train station so you could see a little bit more or um, zoom in on Buckingham Mountain so you can see a bit more. I'm not sure, but um, I actually like the uncropped version better than the cropped version because I think you're able to see a lot more of the scenery. The two images on the right, these are also from Buckingham Mountain and Buckingham Station. So it's two different versions of the exact same site, um, but they just wanted to showcase different things. So the image on the left showcases more of the station and the image, oh, sorry, the image on the top showcases more of the station and the image on the bottom showcases more of the mountain. So there's many other pictures taken of Buckingham Mountain. A lot of them are wolf rocks, which is a rock formation at the top of the mountain, but they also took a lot of these pictures around the mountain as well. So because Buckingham Township is so big, I wanted to include two different slides about it. So these are four images that were never made into postcards that I thought were really interesting. Starting with the top left, this is the milk team of J.W. Doan of Furlong. I'm not sure if he's related to the Doan family. That's something we would have to do more research about. But I just really like this picture to show how milk was transported at the time. We see other of their postcard negatives that show milk being loaded on trains. But this is probably how that milk would be brought to the train stations. The image on the bottom left is a farmhouse at Mozart. Um, this is located pretty close to some of the other images they took. They did a store of the Mo Mozart. Um, they did a picture of the Mozart store and post office and made that into a postcard. But this one just shows um, a very different area at the time. I believe this would probably be Alms House Road. If not, it would be located right next to Alms House Road. But I just like how it shows this era for Mozart, especially in this part of Central Bucks County. The image in the middle is Scott Bartlett's house, which is burned. Um, I just think it's interesting to see someone posing next to their house that burned down. I'm not sure if they rebuilt it. It's something that I wanna look into um, after I do research on all these negatives, but it's just an interesting to see if someone's house that burned down with them next to it. And the image on the right is Forest Grove. They did several postcards of Forest Grove, but they took a lot more um, images. There's probably about eight pictures they took of Forest Grove, of various houses, of businesses around there but they didn't turn them into postcards. And I just like seeing these, uh, these unpublished ones to show like a different element of the same places that they did postcards of. So for Doylestown, they did 11 total negatives, um, seven of them turned into postcards. So they have four images that didn't turn into postcards. So the images on the left are both of card 49, the Bucks County Historical Society. As you can see, the top image wasn't cropped as much. So you can see all the construction around it as it was being built. Um, that's a lot more prevalent here. The image on the top right is another view of the Bucks County Historical Society. It was never turned into a postcard. Um, I actually kind of like this one better. I wish they made it into a postcard because you can see the jail in the same image. This is now the art museum. So it shows the Elkins building of the Historical Society and the now art museum. And I just think it's a really cool view that you don't normally see a lot. The image on the bottom right is R.K. Hellier's store in Doylestown. I had not seen this image before. It was not made into a postcard. And it was just interesting to see that this is one of the businesses they took there. Um, they didn't really take a lot of pictures of businesses in Doylestown. Most of them were landmarks or churches or the meeting house. So it was interesting that this is the image that they took a picture of. So for Doylestown Township, rather than the borough, 
they did 15 total negatives of which seven are postcard negatives. So these are all images of the county home and hospital. Um, I didn't put the, the negative for this one for card 77. I did different views for this one. But here are three different views of the Bucks County Homes and, and Hospital or the um, Bucks County Alms House. I like all of them because it shows different elements of what you're dealing with at the same property. So the image on the top left shows the intersection of Alms House Road with the property. It shows you far away, a very Alms House, different Alms House Road that exists today. The image on the top right shows a different view entirely, also more about being far away from off of Alms House Road, but just shows just how much land there was there at the time. And the image on the bottom right shows some of the gardens that they have there. Um, it's just a really pretty building. I like how they took so many different angles of it. And it's really cool to see these in different elements than the postcard. The image on the top left, this circular formation was put on the negative. So it wasn't cropped after, it was actually attached to the camera. So when you took a picture, it was embedded on the negative. This shows up in a few of their postcards and I was always wondering if it was actually on the camera or if they did it after. So it was interesting to see that it was on the camera. For Durham Township, they did three negative totals, two of which are postcard negatives. It's hard to see, but these are two different images. So the one on the left and the one in the middle, that's the same image. Um, this is the postcard for it of Durham, Durham Furnace and Durham Creek, and in the middle is the negative for it. And then the image on the right was just taken horizontally rather than vertically. So you have a different position of the tree. You have a little bit more to the right of the furnace over here. Um, and a little bit more of the bridge. But they're almost identical, but it was interesting to see that for this one, they did a horizontal and a vertical. For Falls Township, they took one picture in Falls Township and they turned it into a postcard. So this is the Fallsington Friends Meeting House. Um, some On some of them, they were a Hick site because there was another meeting house at the time that was a different denomination. So they wanted to let people know that this was the Hick site one. So for this one, you can just see how much more clear the negative is now. So you can see a little bit more of the barn structures they had over here, some of the images of the stone. Um, it's a little bit more clarity for there. So it's just an interesting picture to see. It's a really pretty building. It's cool to see today too. So for Haycock Township, they took to a total of nine different pictures, five of which were turned into postcards. The ones that were not turned into postcards are all different versions of the same building or the Whitehall Hotel in Applebaxville. So these two on the left, that's the same image. The top one's just the negative. Um, what's interesting to me is when I digitize them, I can read a lot more with the signs. So something that popped up in a lot of them that I digitized was for these signs, they were all for the same sign for lager and beer. So all the, the different taverns in Bucks County have the same sign of them at a time. So I want to research that to see, was this the big player in Bucks County at the time or was it just the general sign? But it's interesting that they all had them. There's also some advertisements for county fairs on a lot of the trees in the images. So that's something that when you digitize, you can zoom in and actually read exactly what it was. A lot of them were from Trenton. Uh, they were like traveling fairs. So that was cool to see. The two images on the right, these are two different views of the same place at the Apple uh, Whitehall Hotel in Apple Vaxville. Just shows you different um, ways to view it. You can see the horse-drawn carriage. You can see the wagon here and the owner's family. So it's just nice to see some different areas of the same building that you wouldn't see. And you can see the side here too that you didn't see in the original image. For Ivy Land Borough, they did 17 negatives totals, 17, uh, seven of which became postcards. So the image on the left is of Ivy Land Station. Um, the negative word up top, you can see some of the clarity for the signs again, like I was talking about before, it's really cool, cool to blow it up and then actually be able to read them. There's a lot of different advertisements on here, and it's cool to be able to see them and then research them after to see what they were advertising at the time. You can't see it so much in the postcard series, so that's always nice to have these negatives to go back to. The two images on the right were never turned into the postcards, but they show different buildings um, in Ivy Land at the time. The top one was just labeled as a residence. We're not sure whose residence it was or who lived there at the time, but it just says residence. And the bottom one is residence at Miss Albert Frank's house. So I like when they do these pictures of people posing in front of their houses. It could have been family members. Sometimes they had their friends with them. So I like to see what people are wearing. So these are cool pictures to see like how they dressed at the time and just like how they did family photos. So a lot of times people are just very serious in them. Sometimes they're smiling, but it's always different to see like these different groups that pop up. For Langhorn Borough, they did four total pictures. Um, three of them were postcard negatives. 
So the two on the left is of the Middletown Friends Meeting House, and then the image on the right was never turned into an uh, image. This was the Orthodox Friends Meeting House in Langhorn. So this one didn't show up as quite as well with digitizing, so I'm going to do it again. But this is how you can see that there was two different meeting friends at the uh, meeting friends houses in the same municipality for the two different uh, denominations. For Lower Southampton Township, they did a total of two photos. Both of them became um, postcards. So the images on the left are Southampton Township High School, and the images on the right are Trevis School and Post Office. Sometimes over time, the negative got a little bit darker in spots. Um, it's not shadow for me taking it. A lot of times it's just it became dark over time where there might have been spots on it, um, but still interesting to see. And the one on the right, you can see some of the clarity with the street signs too. So that's easier to see exactly what streets it was at. And you can see a little bit more clarity in the, pic people's, uh, the pictures of the people's faces. And you can even make out the name of the business on this cart. For Middletown Township, they did nine total pictures, seven of which became postcards. Um, the two on the left are the same image. They're of the reservoir of the Springfield Water Company and the Chamonix Falls. And then the image on the right is the same reservoir, but from a different view. I like the one on the right because you can see the train in the background. So you can see how close the reservoir to the train was to the train tracks. Um, some of the other pictures they did in Middletown are also along these same train tracks. So they have pictures of the water below, of the falls, of the train station, but I haven't seen one before where they have the reservoir with the train station. So the, I thought this was really cool to see and it just gave you a different perspective for the same location. For Morrisville uh, Borough, they took four total negatives, but zero of them became postcards. So they might not have ever liked the images they took or they might not have thought there was a market for their postcards, but they never turned any of these into postcards. And I think some of them are pretty cool. So the one on the top left is of the Morrisville Rubber Works. The one on the bottom left is of the Pennsylvania Railroad Freight Yard in Morrisville. Uh, that's still here today. I think it's used by New Jersey Transit now. The images on the top right and the bottom right, these are both of Summer Seat, which is a historic building in Morrisville, and it just shows you two different versions of this same property. For New Hope Borough, um, they did a total of 12 uh, negatives. Um, not all 12 are postcards. I think six or seven of them are postcards. Sorry about that. But these are all images of the New Hope Bridge. So these two on the left, the top and the bottom on the left, um, are both of the New Hope Delaware Bridge. So you can see some more clarity in this top one, a little bit more of the structure about the boat and a little bit more of the railings on the bridge. But these four uh, other ones in the middle and on the right are four different versions of the New Hope Delaware Bridge. So they might not have liked any of these as much as the ones that they went with, but it's interesting to see how many different areas that they captured for the same bridge. Sometimes they were upstream of the bridge, sometimes they were downstream of the bridge, but interesting to see um, what they went with. A lot of times I like to get some of the rocks in the pictures. So you have kind of like a contrasting view with the water and the bridge, but still interesting to see. So for Newtown Borough, they did 11 negative total and eight of them are postcard negatives. So the two on the left um, are the same image of the old bank in Newtown Academy. And then the image on the right is the same, um, a same view, but it's come from a slightly different location. So you can still see the old bank in Newtown Academy here, but then you see the new bank on the left. And then you see they use that filter again on the negative, on the camera when they were taking the picture. So that way you can see like a different versions of it. Um, I like them all equally. I think they're pretty interesting, but I like the one on the right the best because you can see the trolley tracks here in the front. So you knew that trolley ran against there. And you also can see a little bit more of this new bank in there. So I think that one's the better one, but they didn't turn that into a postcard. So for Naka Mixon Township, there's a total of nine different negatives. Um, five of them are postcards. So these are all images of top rocks, um, which is a formation along the Delaware River. This is probably the hardest location to get to today. It's located on private property. When I took a picture of it for the book, I had to go out to, um, I researched who owned the property online and then I had to call him to make sure I could come to his property and take a picture of it because it's really hard to get to. But the two images on the left are of the same view, 191 Top Rock Narrows of the Delaware. And then the images on the right are two different views of Top Rocks they never went to. So the image on the top right was titled Group of People on Top Rocks. So coincidentally, this is about where I stood or I stood or sat when I was taking pictures of stop, uh, top rocks because I didn't want to fall down. 
So it's interesting to see that those were where the people are sitting in this picture. And then the bottom one is looking downriver of Topped Rocks. Um, they did three different pokes cards of Top Rocks. They're cards uh, in the 190s, um, but they added two more pictures that they never turn into postcards. They probably couldn't do five different postcards of the same location, but it's actually a really beautiful location. So they probably liked it so much to take multiple different views of it. Northampton Township, um, they live nearby. So they took a lot of negatives here. 37 of them are from this uh, township, 13 of which were turned into postcards. So the images on the left, these two are the same image. This is card number one, the first postcard they did of Renewable Station and Post Office. Newton Arnold, the photographer, worked in here as a station agent. Um, sometimes we have images of him working the telegraph table. So this is where he worked. And so they have a lot of different views in revolving around Grenoble Station. So later on in this presentation, you'll see more different views of Grenoble Station than what we have here. So just keep that in mind um, when I bring that up later that we'll see this again. The images, the other four images all revolve also around Grenoble Station. So this top one in the middle, was unloading telephone poles for Grenoble Station. The train says Lehigh Valley Railroad, um, and it's cool to see all the different trains and the lumber and the horses. This middle one is someone taking a picture in front of the station with their significant other with the horse-drawn carriage. And then these images on the right are of the quarry. So in the, eight, uh, the 1890s, it said that Newton worked at this quarry or ran this quarry. We're not sure exactly what he did there, but we have some records of him working this quarry. There's an image titled Newton's Quarry Team Hauling Stone. So we know he was there at some point um, before he was the station agent. But these are images of the them hauling stone. Uh, there's no way to tell there's a quarry there today. There's nothing left of the property to signify it was a quarry. It's all wooded over. But it's interesting to see how deep they were and how many quarries were around here. Um, this is located maybe a mile to a mile and a half up the train tracks from the Wrightstown quarries, the series of four quarries um, around Wrightstown and Rushland. So this area is really ripe for quarrying, but uh, it's gone today. So here are four more images of Northampton Township. The image on the top left is a group and house of Miss Huntsman in Richboro. Um, I haven't seen this house today, so I would have to see if it's still standing. It's um, something on my list to research after I'm done with this presentation. On the bottom left is Harry Nipper's house at Jacksonville. This is still standing today. It's located um, on a cul-de-sac that's near Alms House Road and Jacksonville Road. So it's cool to see that this house is still standing. The image on the top right is Will Wiley's house and family. This is the, the picture that someone mentioned in the chat that, that is their house. So this house is still standing along with their barns. It's located off of Alms House Road um, near the Farm and Garden Station, so near the train tracks or Mearns Road, so near the Mearns family properties. And the image on the bottom right is Burt Stout's house in Churchville. So they took a few different pictures of Churchville. There's the Churchville Station, there's the Churchville Store and Post Office, the Churchville's Church, but they didn't publish any of the houses into postcards. So I like to show what Churchville looked like in the, at the time through houses. So it's pretty interesting to see um, you can see the nice Victorian houses, a lot of grass, and I wasn't expecting the surrounding areas to be so empty. Like I was not expecting a church, uh, um, a farm to be back here in Churchville, but it was still very cool to see. For Quakertown Borough, they did one picture total and they turned it into a postcard. This is the Richland Friends Meeting House in Quakertown. We're not sure why they didn't take more pictures up in Quakertown. Um, there was another postcard manufacturer up there at the time named Berkemeyer who did a lot of pictures of Upper Bucks County. So that might be why but still um, a nice image to see. You can see some of the clarity in the negative, um, but this is the only one they did of the Quaker Town area. For Regalsville, they did one picture. They didn't turn into a postcard. Um, the negative's not great quality. I'm not sure if the image didn't turn out well when they took it, but they only took one picture of Regalsville. They did not turn it into a postcard. It's of the Regalsville Bridge, as you can see here. Um, so that was the extent of the Northern part of Bucks County they went up to. For Solberry Township, they took 22 total pictures, 15 of which were turned into postcards. So the images on the left are the same image. This is the Catalosa Fountain. Um, you can see someone standing in front of it. Um, the image I have on the top right is another view of the fountain. They don't have someone standing in front of it. Um, it just shows a little bit closer up of the rocks. You can see the water sprouting out of the pipe here, but just a different view. And then the image on the bottom right is called Farmhouse Near New Hope at Worthington's Place. Um, I like a lot of these old farmhouse photos because you can see 
how working farms operated at the time, as opposed to a lot of the farmhouses we have today aren't really farms anymore, they're more residences. So I like how this whole farm property is here now and you can see with the fence and everyone's standing in front of it and some of their greenery they have over here, they look like some type of um, plants that you would eat. Like, I don't know if they're fruits or other trees around there, but it seems really interesting to me. So for Springfield Township, they did two pictures total, one of which became a postcard. So the two pictures they did is of Rocky Valley. Um, this is actually the background that I have for me speaking now. So this is Rocky Valley, one of the three rock fields in Bucks County they took pictures of. Um, it's kind of hard to see that these are different images, the one on the left and the one on the right, but they ended up going with the one on the left for their postcard. They might've liked that a little bit better, but these are the only pictures they took of Springfield. For Tinnacombe Township, they did 15 total pictures, eight of which became postcards. So the images on the left are the same image of the Point Pleasant Bridge on the Delaware River. This is hanging shad, uh, or these are net, shad nets hanging here. Um, they used to take the shad and uh, the shad nets and put it into the river to take shad out. Um, it was a very big industry at the time. On some postcards beneath Point Pleasant Bridge, it says um, hanging shad nets here. Um, not on all the postcards, but some of them have it. The image on the right is also another view of the Point Pleasant Bridge. So it shows you a different um, view of it. it. This looks like it's looking upriver, but I like this view of the bridge a little bit better because you can see a little bit more of the, the power lines going over top this. You can see some of the structure of the trussle, but you don't see the shad nets. So for this one, for a postcard, you would have trade-offs. Do you want to talk about the shad or do you want to just have the bridge? So it looks like they wanted to go with the bridge and the nets. So that was an interesting reason they picked that because if it was just for the bridge, I think the image on the right is a little bit better. For Upper Makefield Township, there's four different views of the Delaware River Bridge. Here are three of them. The two on the left are the same view. Um, you can see this is looking upriver. You can see some of the little boats here. There's actually a person standing out here beneath the pier, so that's nice to see. The images on the right or are of the same location, but a slightly different views of it. Again, on the top right is a picture of the Delaware River Bridge, and the bottom right is actually right at the bridge approach, and you can see the bridge here in the background. I like this picture a lot because you can see the business that was here at the time. It was advertising ice cream. You can read some of the signs when you zoom in on it, and then you can see the little bit of the bridge there. So I actually really wish they would have turned this into a postcard because it's such a nice image, and it shows like a nice like bucolic scene in Washington Crossing at the time, and it's just a nice image to look at. For Upper Southampton Township, they did five pictures total. All of them became postcards. So because I don't have any new images to show, I showed two different uh, views of their cards. The, so the two on the left are card number 91, the carriage and blacksmith shops in Davisville. Um, it's interesting to see what um, this uh, street road would have looked like at the time, very different than street road of today, um, not nearly as busy, but blacksmiths would have been really important at the time. So if you're on this major road, um, street road was still major at the time, even though it doesn't look like it, you would need supplies for people taking their carriages and for their horses. So you would have had to have a blacksmith. Um, this now intersection is with a gas station. So as street road became more important for cars, uh, a gas station took over the um, blacksmith shop. The images on the right were of the Hartsville store and post office. Um, this would have been a very big intersection at the time. Um, this is off of Old York Road. So before they built the New York Road, this would have been a really important intersection. So this would have been a really busy store and post office. And then when they rerouted York Road, this village is not as busy anymore. For Warminster Township, they did 10 total, uh, sorry, they did 12 total negatives, eight of which became postcards. So all three of these are the Van Sant uh, Craven Graveyard. The image on the left and the image on the right is the same image. You can just see some of the clarity um, in the gravestones. And then they did another view of this gravestone. Um, in the middle, they took a, a close-up of Herman Van Sant's graveyard. So that was interesting to see. Um, on the postcard for their description, they were actually wrong for when this person died. In my book, I think I talk about a little bit why they were wrong for the inscription. They read the inscription wrong. So a lot of the stones were hard to read at the time and they actually read um, that wrong. So they said the person was uh, died at the wrong year. So this is the gravestone that they got wrong. For Warrington Township, they did six total negatives, four of which are postcard negatives. So the Im two images on the left are the same. This is of the Paul Valley Bridge and Powerhouse. So 
You can see a little bit more clarity in the negative, but it's a cool shot. You can see the trolley in the foreground. Um, you can see the horses and every all of the different um, animals there. So it's cool to see. The image of the right is of the same powerhouse. It's just zoomed in so you can see a much better view. So you can see the trolley turning around here. So this is where the trolley would have came to um, and where also they would have produced the power. So I really like this image a lot, especially seeing the trolley tracks here and the trolley turning. It's just a really cool image to see. For Warwick Township, this is probably the township they took the most pictures in. They did 60 pictures total here, um, 11 of which they turned into postcards. So this is the uh, township I have the most information for. So the top left uh, is called Neshamne Frozen Up at Deep Hole. Some of their very early glass plate negatives, they have these double images on them. So it's the same image twice. Um, so this was cool to see. So I have that in here to show you um, the double negatives that they have. The image on the top, uh, on the bottom left is titled Residence at uh, Bennett's Dudbridge House, Sycamore Farm. So this most likely became a postcard. So if you ever want to try to find it, I'm almost certain this became a postcard at some point because Sycamore Farm was added in here on text. So behind the negative, they attached a little piece of text. So when you turned it into a postcard, this would have appeared. So they must have made it for someone. Someone probably ordered postcards. Um, and it's cool to see their landscaping, all their different plants, and then all posing for the Sycamore par uh, Farm view. The image on the top right is called Henry uh, Harry Walton's Place near Grenoble. They have a lot of the Walton family photos. Um, there's a Walton Road out there today, so they would have lived off of that. But I really like this property showing um, all the, the grass or, or the crops in the forefront and then just their giant stone farmhouse. And I just think it's a really pretty view. And the bottom right is called Two Men Fishing at Grenoble. Um, this also would have been made into a postcard. Some people own this as a postcard because they found it. Um, again, this is when they would have added the, the text in before they produced it saying at Grenoble. And I just really like this picture because it shows the fishing poles, the men fishing, and then the Neshamne Creek or little Neshamne Creek in the foreground. So it's just a very bucolic picture. They did about three different versions of this. So there's pictures of the boys by themselves or standing, and it's just a nice image to see. So for Warwick Township 2, um, the two I have on the left is Mearns Mill on the Little Neshamne. This is postcard 58. Over time, this negative has dissolved a little bit, so it's not as nice, um, but still interesting to see. The images I have on the right are two different view views of the Mearns property. So they didn't turn these into postcards, but they are still very cool to see. Um, they show the front and the back of this house or this barn, and it's just a different view. Um, this is located off of Alms House Road. Although the mill is no longer standing, a lot of other views of the property are there today. So we're at Township 3. The image on the left, uh, both of them are the same. This is Bridge Valley Mills and New Arch Bridge. Coincidentally, um, for this one, even though the printed postcard has the circle around it, the negative does not. So for this one, they added in the circle after they took the picture. Maybe they thought they had too much grass in the foreground, I'm not sure, but they kept that as a circle. Um, I like the picture both ways, but they did not. The images on the right, these are two different views of Bridge Valley and they show the bridge and they're more taken on a hill. And I really like both of these too because I like seeing the creek below. I like seeing all the arches in the bridge, how this was a working area and there was a lot of different farms around it. Um, it's just a cool image to see. Today, it's really hard to get an image like this because there's a lot more trees around here. Um, at the time, the brothers were taking pictures of Bucks County. Tree cover was very, very low. So all of Bucks County that could be farmed pretty much was farmed um, and there was not a lot of trees. Today, there's substantial tree cover in all the locations that they went to or almost all of them. So it's really hard to get those shots because there's so many more trees today, so you can't get them. Or roads have been rerouted. So in this case, York Road has been rerouted a few hundred feet away from this. So the only way to get a picture like this is from York, the New York Road, but you still can't get the same image of it. So I really like these views to show what Bridge Valley area used to look like. For Wrightstown Township, they did 64 pictures total, again, up there with Warwick for the most number of pictures taken, 29 of which became postcards. So they have 35 that never became postcards. So I wanted to show this because all five of these are of the same building but they were under different ownership and taken at different times. So the image that I have on the bottom, the two images, these are the same. This is the Rushland Store and Post Office when it was owned by Fisher Brothers. 
The image on the right, I put in just to show more clarity with the signs. You can read a lot more on the front signs and the, uh, the right sign and see more clarity with the horse-drawn wagons. And then the three images at the top are when it was owned by a different family. So at this point, it would have been owned by the L. Hageman business. Um, it was called L. Hageman Merchandise Store. So before Fisher bought it, it was owned by these people. And they did three different versions of their building because they wanted to photograph it. So they have the back of the building, they have the side of the building, and then the front of the building. So I think that's cool to see. And then after they sold it to the Fisher brothers, the Arnold, uh, Newton Arnold took another picture of it. So I think that's cool. Uh, this is located in Rushland. So at the time, they would have lived just a few houses down from this. So it would have been very easy for them to go out and take pictures because they only lived a few hundred feet away from here. And this store is still here today. It's now the post office. So for more views of Wrightstown Township, I wanted to show some views that showed it in a different light than their postcards. The images on the left are of the Thompson and Barber Lumberyard in Wycombe. This is still here today. It's located near the train tracks and the railroad station in Wycombe. Just shows you a lot of the different businesses and how active this was at a time, especially with the train station right there. So you have this lumber yard that can make use of the train station being right there. The image on the top right is called Residence at Howard Bethel's Place in Rushland. It shows some of the farmland that existed at Rushland in the time. There's not many farms left around there today. It's all quarries. Um, there's the there's the feed mill, Davis Feed Mill, located there. But besides that, it's mostly quarries. And on the bottom right is Miss Emma Hall's house in Wycombe. So they took a lot of different pictures of Wycombe, uh, but they did even more that they didn't turn into postcards. So some of their postcards are just an image of a house for Wycombe. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't pick this one and they picked the other ones, but I just think it's nice to see some of the other houses that they have um, in the village. So for Yardley Borough, they took one picture total. They turned it into a postcard. It's the Yardley Friends Meeting House. Um, you can see that here. It's still there, there today. It's now a Santander Bank. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't take more images of the Yardley area. This is all they did. They didn't take any in Lower Makefield or around there, and they only took a few in Morrisville. But um, they nonetheless went down all the way down to Yardley, but only took one picture. So now that I'm done the Bucks County municipalities, I'm just going to go through the last few remaining sections that I have. So that way I can show some of the other images that don't fit. So everything else I'm going to show you so far has never been turned into a postcard. These are just very interesting images I thought I should share and that show a different um, era of Bucks County and some of the areas around Bucks County at the time. Most of these images are from Bucks County, um, unless it specifically says they're not in Bucks County, they're in another uh, municipality. So these three are farm scenes. The image on the left is called Turning the Grindstone. The image in the middle was uh, making a fence with Watts Hampton and Hugh Mearns. This would have been of the Mearns with the Mearns family. So we know it was taken near the Mearns family property. And on the right is loading hay. So Bucks County at the time would have been a very agricultural county. Um, and these would have been really important industries. So it showcases just some of the working people working on farms. So then there's a total of 24 views that are titled miscellaneous views. They don't really fit into a category that's been categorized, but they showcase different parts. So on the left, this is titled Rockfield View C. They did many different views of this Rockfield. Um, I'm not sure where it is. They, there's not enough information to figure out where it is, but it's really cool because it shows all the different graffiti located on this rock. Um, we don't know how old it was. Maybe it was carved in the rock a long time ago or recent, but I would love to figure out where this is. Um, the person standing here, I'm 99% sure is Charles Arnold, the, pr the person who printed the postcards. I don't, it doesn't say anywhere on the negative, but based about what he looks like and based about how I can zoom in and see his face, I would say that that's Charles Arnold. The image in the middle is titled Waterfalls in the Woods. Again, we are not sure where this is located, but it's just a very pretty picture of waterfalls. And then the two images on the right, the top right is Camping Scene to Fisherman View V. There's about five different views of people camping. Uh, again, we don't know where this is, but still a very pretty picture. And then the image on the bottom right is titled Dirt Road, Canal, and Barge. So I would say, if I had to guess, this is definitely Upper Bucks County. I would say near Top Rocks. Um, I don't know exactly where because there's no location on it, but you can see some of the mountains on the top right of the image at the bottom um, showing you that there is some elevation at that point. So it would have to be farther north in Bucks County. Um, and it's just a very pretty scene. So for the transportation category, there's nine total negatives. So these show different um, transportation modes that were used at the time. So one on the top left was titled Auto Two-Seater View A. 
there's many different pictures of this family, some with the kids, some without the kids, some with the husband and wife. But at the time, cars would have been relatively new. Um, these photographs were taken between the late 1800s and the early 19 teens. So cars would have been very new. If you had one at the time, you were probably wealthy or you knew people who were wealthy. Um, and so obviously when you're taking pictures of the cars, you are, you're very really fascinated by it. We know the Arnold brothers love cars. They have a lot of pictures with cars. Um, they donated money to a campaign called the Good Road Magazine, where you send in money to have cars be made throughout the country. The image on the bottom left is titled Horse and Two-Wheeled Cart. I like this because as people are still using cars, uh, getting used to cars, they were still using these wagons. So you would have had to take these wagons on all the roads throughout Bucks County, and it's just nice to see um, close-ups of it. The image on the top right is of the New Hope local freight line. Um, unfortunately, this negative has been broken in two. I put them together to take the picture of it. Um, just a few of their facial expressions have been cut off, which is a shame, but besides that, it's still a very good picture. And it's one of the few pictures they took in the winter. So I would say they maybe took 15 to 20 out of 650 pictures in the winter. So not very many. I'm not sure if they didn't like to go out in this cold, maybe you didn't get as good pictures at the winter, but um, this is one of the few that they did in the winter. The image on the bottom right is titled Freight Engine 166 and Crew. I wanna do some more research to see if I can find anything out about this. Um, I don't know where it was taken, there was no location, but it's a nice image to see um, and some more different real images that we have. So the next category was titled Birds and Insects. Um, they did three images, all three of them are here. I'm not sure why they only did three. They might have found that they didn't like photographing these. They might've found that they were not really interested in the subjects, but here are the three images they did. The one on the left is titled Young Screech Adle, uh, Owl. The one on the top right is of a green heron's nest. And the one on the bottom right is enlarged insect. The one on the right, if the insect was still alive, was probably pretty hard to do. Um, the cameras would have had to be able to kept, capture this image very fast. He would have had to zoom in. So it's interesting to see. This is the closed up image that we have. So all three of these are pretty much the closed up image that we have, but this insect is definitely the one that's the most zoomed in. So the next category is cats and dogs. Some of their other pictures have cats and dogs in them, but these are the ones that only are cats and dogs. The image on the left is Dr. Neil and Trixie. We have a few different images of Trixie. Um, the pug is, looks happy in all of them, so they must have been really fascinated by them. So I just think that's a really cute image. The one on the top right is Don Kindred State Major, uh, State Saint Bernard Standing. So Don Kindred owned property um, right at Grenoble Station. He, the Kindred family, they were the purchasing agent for the Pennsylvania Railroad at the time. So they would have lived right next to where Newton Arnold was working Grenoble Station. So this would have been his dog and it's a nice image. And the one on the bottom right is a cat named Malti. There's a few different views of cats and dogs in them. And so it's interesting to see how they had them pose. And it shows you at this time, people still love taking pictures with their pets like we do today. And people are just really, um, really just like to pose with them. They did 14 total negatives of plants and flowers. So the one on the left is a star cactus. The one in the middle is a bouquet of cosmos and choreopus. And the image on the right is an azalea. Uh, azalea. So these are all interesting to see. The cactus is pretty cool to me. Uh, I, was, I would not have imagined they would be easy to get cactuses um, in Bucks County at the time. It was probably a lot more easy than I was expecting, but it just wouldn't be naturally occurring to me that they had cactuses here that they could keep as um, plants. And it's just interesting to see all these other ones. Um, all of these are glass plate negatives too. So for the last few categories, this is titled Unidentified Buildings. We don't really have a description of where these were taken. We don't know what they are taken of, but we do know that they're unidentified buildings. So it just showcases more buildings at the time. So we have like brief descriptions like burned house or house torn down. Um, we have dates, so I'm going to try to match these up with some of the locations on other dates to see if I can figure out where they are. But we have 11 total negatives that are unidentified buildings. We don't know what they are. We don't know where they are. So here are four of them. Just showcase different views of scenes at the time. So then there are 58 negatives for non-Bucks County locations, but we know where they are. So the image on the top left is Fort William and New York Harbor. We know that the brothers went to New York a few times, at least once to take images. Their images aren't that good. So they would have taken these at the beginning when they were first doing, uh, when Newton was first doing photography. 
Um, I don't know if it was the camera they used at the time, but these negatives did not show up great. Um, the image on the bottom left is of Wissahickon Dam and the Pennsylvania Railroad Bridge in Philadelphia. I really like this image. You can zoom in and see advertisements for a gum company right here. Um, and I just think it's a really cool image. And the image in the middle is of Union Hall in Philadelphia. And the image of the right is of Carpenters Hall in Philadelphia. Again, these are all early. So these are all glass plate negatives. Um, Carpenters Hall showed a pretty good Union Hall's uh, Union League building is okay. But a lot of their early buildings, uh, a lot of their early pictures for non Bucks County locations didn't really show up great. They took about eight in Harrisburg and they really were not good. They took a few in Easton and they were okay. There was a panorama of Easton that was better. But for the most part, their early images are, their quality is not great. So I put four here that are the best because I didn't want to put some of the bad ones. So for the Arnold family, they did 18 total pictures. The image of the life uh, on the left is titled Mother Sitting in Rocker, Cat on Floor. They had a few different cats. They took pictures of the mom with the cats. So they have mother on rocker with cat, mother feeding cat, mother holding cat, mother petting cat. So there's, there are a few different views of it. They seem to really love these cats. There's also a picture with Charles with the cat in the workshop. The image in the middle is titled Big Cart Caught at Neshamity in Grenoble. This is Charles Arnold, the uh, printer. This is him with his fish. This was actually sent into a magazine and published elsewhere, but it's cool to see the original photo. The image on the top right is um, titled Me at My Telegraph Table. This was Newton Arnold, um, the photographer, in his train station in Grenoble when he worked the telegraph, as well as the station agent. When you zoom in, you can see some of the information on this brochure. You can see some information on the calendar. So it's cool to see what their lives were like at the time. The image on the bottom right is titled Our House in Grenoble. So this would have been on the Warwick side of Grenoble. Grenoble spans both Northampton Township and Warwick Township. Um, this is their mother. Actually, I think that is, um, I don't remember who this is, but this is their house in Grenoble. And they have a few different images of their garden. And they talk about mother in garden, mother with friend in garden, Charles in garden. But it shows their garden and how important it was to them. Um, you can see a ton of corn in the background, some of the plants in the beginning. Um, they lived in Grenoble. Uh, they were born in Johnsville and Warminster. Then they moved to Grenoble. And then after this, they moved to Rushland. So they moved right down the road a little bit more to Rushland. Um, when they lived in Rushland, they also have pictures of their homes with their gardens in front of it. So it tells you that gardening was really important to them. So this is identified people. There are a total of 45 different negatives that we know who the people are, but they're just people. Um, they're not, they don't fit into another category like a Bucks County municipality. So the image on the top left is of the Rushland School Group, View A. There's two different views of this. Um, I know Carol will probably like this because she's doing some research with the school groups of Bucks County and schoolhouses. So this was the Rushland Schoolhouse. I didn't know there was a schoolhouse there. So I wanna do more research about that. The image on the bottom left is Frank Walton, cat and dog. Again, this is Walton of the Walton Road in Rushland. Um, here he is with the gun and his cat and his dog. We've seen this dog before. The image in the middle is of John J. Sellers. This is at the Grenoble Station. So if you remember before I said, remember Grenoble Station, here's another view of Grenoble Station. You can see the name of Grenoble Station up here at the top. And on the right, when I make it uh, bigger and I add more contrast to the photo, you can see the name of the telegraph company that Newton worked for because it says telegraph on here. The image on the right is Lizzie Stewart. She has the honor of being the most photographed person out of all of the negatives. There is seven different views of her wearing this kimono-like dress. She's smiling, she's sad, she has the umbrella, she doesn't have the umbrella, but she's the most photographed person. Over 1% of all the negatives are just of her because I'm not sure if they why they were so fascinated with her, but it was just an interesting view to see. And then the last category we have is unidentified people. There are 30 negatives that are unidentified. We're not sure who the people are in them, but I just think they're cool images. So the one on the left is titled Sharpshooter. Um, this is Grenoble Station. You can tell by the stonework in the background. So they had a picture of someone posing with the gun in front of Grenoble Station. He could have just been someone passing by and they really liked him, so they took a picture, but it's cool to see. The image on the top right is people playing tennis surrounded by corn. Um, it's cool to see a tennis court that's with grass on it rather than a tennis court clay or other type of pavement. So I really like that picture. And then the image on the bottom right is man with bicycle. It's just another way to see transportation at the time. Bicycles would have been really important to get from point A to point B. We know that Newton Arnold really, really liked bicycling. Um, he actually bicycled to work along. He had a, a bicycle that attached the train tracks, so it had a third wheel. 
So that way it could stay connected. So he biked one mile to work. There's one photograph of him biking to work, but unfortunately the quality is so poor you can barely see anything in it. So I put another image of someone on a bicycle here to show you what people are really interested in at the time. And that's all I have. So I'm happy to take questions. Chase, thank you so much. It's so interesting to see how many different photos they took before they kind of decided uh, which ones were the best uh, to turn into the postcards. We have a couple questions. Um, I will kind of go uh, from the beginning here. Um, Jesse is wondering, when you were talking about the negatives that had the two exposures, do you have any idea if they were meant to be for stereoscopes? That's a great idea. I'm not sure. They probably were. I can do more research about that. Um, I worked on digitizing everything. So there was like the 650 to digitize. So that took a long time. So I didn't like think about those, but those are great questions now that I'm like, now that I have time to do more research on everything. So that's something to think about. Um, they probably were. So I'll have to look at the camera type, but that's something I can talk to you about after. Um, you also added some comments too that are really helpful. So I didn't realize the chemistry for the photography didn't work well in the cold. So that probably is why they didn't take many pictures in the cold. So thanks for that. And thanks for the native cactus. I did not know that that was a native cactus. So that's very useful too. And we have some questions. So um, Judy was wondering if you could just kind of repeat the, the date range of the negatives and of, um, of I guess the Arnold brothers and their, their postcard series, if you could kind of talk about that a little. Yeah, so the negatives would have been taken in the very uh, late 1800s to the very early 1800s. So um, if you give me one second, I can actually pull up um, the negative index so I can tell you a little bit more information. This will also help answer Tom and Caitlin's question that comes next. So give me one, uh, one second and I'll pull that up. While Chase does that, I'll read out Tom and Caitlin's question. Um, they asked, what was the name of the other postcard maker in Upper Bucks? Um, so Chase will actually be able to find this information for us live. The beauty of, uh, the beauty of doing things virtually these days. Yep, so I'll start at the beginning. So here's the negative index. Um, I edit this a lot, so let me edit by date. So the last picture that they, sorry, one second, let me do this. So this is what the negative index looks like. It's all able to um, be searchable and you can see everything in here. So let me search by date and see if I can get this. Um, while I'm doing that, the name of the postcard publisher in Upper Bucks County was uh, Berkemeyer. So I, it's B-E-R-K-M-E-Y-E-R. -E -E I think that's how it's spelled. It might be a little bit differently, but that um, was the postcard manufacturer up there. So the first image that they took was of the Fairview Schoolhouse in Warwick. This was in, um, it's May 7th, 1896. So the oldest negative was from May 7th, 1896. And the last negative that they took was May 19th, 1908. So the last one they took was of the street view in Dolington. So interesting, oh, some of them don't have dates. If my, math, uh, if my math serves me. Yeah, so they did pictures for about, 12 years. So Newton Arnold took pictures for about 12 years. We're not sure when, um, when his last uh, picture was. From this, it's 1908, but he could have taken pictures on other cameras that we don't have the negatives of. Um, this index is really great. It's called a finding aid with the Mercer Museum. So if you're ever doing research about them, they have this. Um, and it also is just very useful to sort everything. So you can sort by name, you can do a control F function. So this is really useful for me when I'm doing it. That's awesome. Uh, Jesse was wondering if you had any information about the photographic equipment or processes that they used. Yeah, so I don't have anything about the processes, but for the equipment, I do. So I can talk to you more about that. There, unfortunately, um, for the index, it doesn't list the name of the camera that they used, but on the negative envelopes that I showed, it talks about the uh, process that they used, the cameras, um, and what like their filters were f stop. 
So their early cameras, a lot of them were like the Pony Primo camera. Uh, they had a few different other ones too, but um, you need to look at the negative envelopes for each one. So my goal is to uh, add that information to the index. So I'll go through the negative envelopes to add that in. So that way I can um, list everything. That's awesome. Um, Jeff asking, is there another book on these in the future, Chase? I hope so. <laughs> I'm, I'm working with um, people at the Mercer Museum to either have a book or a website, probably a book about um, uh, the Arnold collection and all the negatives. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. Um, I will keep you updated, but I will hope to be able to make that my next project. And we will keep you updated as well that when Chase has that project ready, I'm sure we'll be able to do another really fascinating talk um, and talk about a new book maybe. Um, like I said, uh, Chase's book is available at the Mercer Museum gift shop. Uh, signed copies, if you were impressed with the talk today, you can get your own autograph of Chase as well. Um, and uh, let's see, I have some comments coming in. Just love seeing old photos of anything Bucks County. Um, Tracy shared, my friend who's watching with me is a lifelong Grenoble resident. He believes he knows where that old quarry is located. They'll contact you. Sounds good. I, I have a rough idea. I have a map of it, um, like on the atlas it's listed at some point. But yeah, I think it's weird back there today. It's actually that whole property is owned by Northampton Township. So when I took pictures of the train tracks for my book, I didn't feel bad like going back there to take pictures because it's owned by the township. But it's a it's a weird place back there. If you've never no one if um, someone has never been to Grenoble, there's not much there today. It's kind of like a dead end road. There's a few very large houses, but it's nothing like you would see in the postcards. There's no train station. There's no houses. It's just a very different place. Mike says, uh, thank you to everyone at the Mercer who helped Chase with the project. Absolutely. Um, Chase has been working with our research library here at the Mercer Museum um, and our wonderful curatorial and library staff. I will just give a quick plug if you're interested in the types of things we have in our research library. A, we are open and um, they do take appointments for research if you're a personal uh, a person interested in personal research, genealogy, building analysis, the type of stuff that um, Chase is doing. We have tons and tons of resources at the Mercer Museum Library. Um, and we also do programs where we feature some of the collections as well. So uh, we do have two upcoming library programs. Uh, one is going to come up in May, on May 18th. We're doing another um, episode in our Treasures from the Library Vault series. Um, focusing on seeds and gardening and mostly on the Burpee and Landreth Seeds Companies um, in Bucks County. We have a, an amazing collection of some of, of you know, seed catalogs, uh, folders, everything, you know, lovely imagery as well that came from their advertisements and, and all sorts of um, amazing things. And then in June, we are having a new program um, hosted by our library and archives manager, Annie Halliday, who I know Chase has been working with. Um, and it's about, you know, uh, how do I preserve the things if I'm the person in my family who gets all the photos and all of the archives and all of the letters and the diaries. And it's um, basically preservation 101 for the family historian. Um, I was thinking about that program, Chase, when you were talking about their family photos and it was mother sitting with cat, mother petting cat, um, and how we as historians of today are lucky that people wrote on the back of their images, at least some of the time. <laughs> um, so if there's no more questions coming in, I don't see any others. Uh, thank you, Chase, so much for um, another fascinating talk. Um, and it's so cool to see these digitized negatives that would have only been able to be seen in person before you've been working on this project. Thank you very and much. I, and I want to thank everyone who joined us tonight. Um, we really appreciate you joining us for our virtual lectures and hope to see you again soon um, for some of our other programming. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much.